Our company, Scaling With Systems, is able to send out thousands of cold emails every single day and land in the email inbox over 80% of the time using these five strategies I'm gonna walk through in this video here. The importance of taking some time to make sure you're doing everything you can in order to get your email in the inbox cannot be overstated because if you think about it, this is literally the bottleneck that affects the rest of your cold messaging campaign. If you're not getting in the inbox, then people can't open it. If people can't open it, they can't read it. If they can't read it, they can't respond back. If they can't respond back, they can't speak with you. And if they can't speak with you, they can't become customers. So understanding and implementing these five strategies could be the difference in having a campaign that generates you booked appointments and clients on autopilot and having one where nobody even sees it and the cold messaging thing doesn't work. Our first strategy to make sure that our emails are staying out of spam is going to be to use different domains. So this is something simple that you can use. It sounds complicated, but in reality, it's actually going to protect you for the long-term growth of your business. So a lot of times when our clients come to us and we're setting up outbound email campaigns, the first thing they want to do is use their main email domain that they use to communicate with their clients and vendors and other people in and out of their company. The issue with this is almost guaranteed over time your cold email domain, the one that we're sending from, will get tarnished. It will get ruined because the truth is you're not going to stay you know, pristine forever and we're not going to stay out of the spam box forever either. I think that cold emails, if you're sending them at a high volume, domains have kind of a shelf life a little bit. And if you uh, plan on using your main domain, like for us, it would be scalingwithsystems.com, then we could tarnish the reputation of our domain and it's very difficult to get it back. So I always recommend separate setting up a separate separate domain with maybe one letter difference from your main one in order to make sure that you're not tarnishing or ruining your main domain. So for example, for us, we could use scalingwithsystem.com instead of scalingwithsystems.com. And in that sense, 99.9% .9 of people have no idea what the difference is. If they went to scalingwithsystem.com, it would redirect them to scalingwithsystems.com and it protects the domain reputation of our main email. So that way, when we're sending warm emails to our clients, or people that are already on our list that we want to send email blasts out to about YouTube videos and promotions, then we can make sure that those don't go into spam because they're being ruined by the cold email messages that we're sending out. Our second stay out of spam strategy is going to be to use customization in the messaging. A few years ago, I used to send anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 emails every single day, and I would copy and paste the same message to every single person that we were sending it to. Same subject line, same message. And this worked, and we were generating a lot of booked appointments and clients from it, but I was having to churn out new email domains literally on a weekly or monthly basis. Instead, what I realized by actually customizing and personalizing the messaging that we're sending out, we have a much higher chance of not going into spam, thus having the domain last longer. And even more important than that, because there's personalization and customization, we're actually getting a higher response rate, which is leading to more booked appointments and more clients for our company. Examples of personalization or customization include using the prospect's name in in the subject line, using their domain in the main body, using the name of their company in the main body, even putting in a one liner that has to do specifically with who they are, what their company is and what they do. We've noticed that this drastically increases response rates, but what this also does is it signals to Gmail and some of the large email providers that we are not copying and pasting the same messaging every single time, which by definition would be spam. And instead these are personalized messages that we're sending to even maybe one of our friends in order to get a response from them. So adding the customization, yes, it may end up in you sending less emails a day than you were if you were just copy and pasting. But if more of those emails are reaching the inboxes and you're getting more responses, then obviously that's the better strategy anyway. Our third stay out of spam strategy is avoiding using spammy words or actions. Every single time you compose and send an email, whoever's email provider you're sending it to will scrape and analyze that email messaging for <laughs> spammy words. And spammy words are words like free or or guarantee or send me your money, any words along those lines. And there's a few websites that you can look at and they'll give you a whole list of them. Those will let you most likely go into a spam folder because they have shown time and time again that those are likely spam emails. So you wanna stay away from some of those spammy words, which you can do really easily by just adding that customization that I talked about in the previous strategy. But staying away from spammy words is simply not enough. We also wanna make sure we're staying away from spammy actions. So going back to these email platforms, 
platforms analyzing what the body of the messaging is saying, they're also analyzing your email domain itself. And they're saying, how many messages is this person sending out? What is their open rate? Are they going into spam in other people's folders? Are other people marking this person as spam? They're analyzing all this to make a judgment as to whether you should be in spam or not. So what are spammy actions? A spammy action would be sending an email, maybe the same email five or six times to the same person over seven days, and they don't open it one time. That is by definition spam. So for us, we have automations and we set up systems so that if we send one email, we don't ever even send the follow-up email unless they opened the previous email. So they don't have to respond, but they have to at the very least open it. And this will then let the, uh, the platforms know, okay, they may not respond, but they are opening it. So maybe they might be interested in it. So let's put them into the main inbox. So stay away from spammy actions where you would think if someone was doing this to me, I would consider them spam. And so you should stay away from doing that when in your cold email messaging. Our fourth strategy for keeping your cold emails out of spam is going to be to use a clean and verified list. There are plenty of websites and softwares out there that will verify your list for like 0. 0.00008 cents every single email. And this may be an additional incurred cost to you. But going back to what I said in the very beginning of this video, if you're not sending the emails to verified and qualified email addresses, and they're not getting actually in the inbox, then it doesn't matter how much money you're spending or not spending because nobody's going to read the messages and nobody's going to book a call to speak with you. So we want to make sure that every single time that we scrape an email list, whether it's manually, whether we're purchasing it from somebody else, whether we download it from a website, that we're taking it to a third party verification company in order to make sure that we're only sending emails out to those that we know are real and legitimate. Because if you think about it, if you're sending a bunch of emails out to emails that are no longer active, that goes back to what we talked about in the previous strategy, which is a spammy action. Why would somebody be sending thousands of emails out to addresses that are not verified or not active? Well, they'd probably be doing that if they were spamming people. Let's put this person in the spamming folder. So we want to take an extra few dollars per campaign and put it through an email verification software in order to make sure that this is an actively used campaign or email address. And the way that these softwares work is they will just send a ping. Just imagine like a, a gentle little ping to that email address and make sure that that email address is currently receiving emails. And if it is currently receiving emails, it'll give you a green light and you can send an email yourself. If it's not currently sending emails, the ping comes back, then it will tell you that no, do not send an email to this person because it's not verified. One of our favorite email verification softwares that we use is one called Never Bounce. And we actually use it not only for our cold outbound messaging, but also for all of our inbound leads. So nobody can get into our email list or into our CRM until they pass through a verification using Never Bounce. And our fifth and arguably most important strategy for staying out of the spam folder is going to be to warm up your email. This is something that requires a little bit of patience and depending on how much you want to spend a little bit of work, but it can make a big difference down the road. I have seen huge differences in people that just buy a new domain and just automatically started sending 500 cold emails a day and those that warm up the inbox over a 14 day period and then slowly start scaling it up to the point that first one that I talked about there, that's pretty much shotgun to approach it and start sending emails immediately, likely starts going into spam within five to seven days, where the second one will gently slowly go into spam and usually cap out somewhere around 20% of their emails go into the spam folder over a year or two year window. So if you're looking for longevity, my biggest recommendation is to start warming up your e inbox. Now, what does it mean to warm up your email? To warm up your email means you essentially, whenever you purchase the domain, you start with emails back and forth to people that you know, or other email addresses that you've created. This, going back to the third strategy we talked about, signals to the email providers that this must be a real email that's having real conversations because it's sending it from this email to this email, this email is opening it and then responding back and saying to this email and they're having a conversation back and forth. And so if you do this over 14 days, you can get a really high verified email domain and then you can start your cold messaging. Another way that you can do this if you don't want to manually be having conversations like a crazy person on a daily basis between your emails is you can use a software online that will do this for you. So they'll take over your email domain and they'll start having conversations with other emails that they own automatically through software. And this is exactly what we use and we set up for our clients anytime we're doing cold outbound messaging for them. One of our favorite softwares that we use is called warmupinbox.com. And so you can connect your domain to warmupinbox.com and it will start having that conversation for you, thus virtually guaranteeing that whenever you start the cold messaging, you're not going to go into spam because it's a new email domain.